To your health and happiness. By Lauren Anderson. Before Facebook blocks this video because I'm playing music, let me read the lyrics to you. It really spoke to me today. Do you know the sound of music? <laughs> well, I'm in the city where sound of music was filmed, so the hills are alive with the sound of music with songs they have sung for a thousand years. The hills fill my heart with the sound of music. My heart wants to sing. Every song it hears, every song it hears. My heart wants to beat like the wings of the birds that rise from the lake to the trees, to the trees. My heart wants to sigh like a chime that flies from a church on a breeze, to laugh like a brook when it trips and falls over stones on its way, on its way, to sing through the night like a lark who is learning to pray. I go to the hills when my heart is lonely. I know I will hear what I've heard before, my heart will be blessed with the sound of music and I'll sing once more. Welcome to session four of our quite spectacular ease challenge. Yeah, I'm feeling really emotional today. Um, good. So, you know, when I cry like this, this is really good because, you know, tears are release. Did you know that? Did you know that if we were to inject tears, and we're not going to do that, right? Inject tears into a mouse, it would die. That's how toxic our tears can be. So if we keep our emotions stuffed in and we never cry those tears of joy, of, of sadness, then, you know, we're actually harming our body. So today is going to be all about love. <laughs> and it's about our heart chakra. Think color green. This is all the green I could find. I even put green makeup on. I had to rob my daughter's makeup tray to find some makeup because I don't wear that much makeup anymore. And yeah, for those of you who, who don't know who I am, we have so many new members in our beautiful Joy Tribe. Let me introduce myself. I am Dr. Joy Martina, the psychic psychologist. I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a sister, <laughs> I'm an aunt, I'm a teacher, and my mission in life is to spread joy while I help myself and others thrive. And I'd like to tell you a little bit more about my personal story for those of you who don't know me, because today is a really important day. We're kind of halfway, we're heading home, we're coming into the space of our hearts and you know our heart is often carrying a lot of pain or maybe memories and experiences of the past that have stopped us from being that vessel of love and, and maybe we feel a little stuck, maybe we realize that we actually have so much love to give and we are love, so how about giving and receiving love with ease? That's our intention for today. So without further ado, you know what's due now, due, right? We need to ground down. We need to make sure that those roots that we have coming out of the soles of our feet, the coccyx of our spine, every vertebrae of our spine is growing down, down, down into the core of the earth. And as we start taking deep, conscious breaths, high as a, we're bringing in that energy of Mother Earth, Pachamama. And we're releasing everything that no longer serves us. Now we're going to imagine bringing in bright white light through the top of our heads. And then imagine looking up into the crown of your head, into that bright white light, 
keep your eyes rolled up there and then say, even if I don't know how to balance and clear my heart chakra in such a way that I am able to give and receive love freely, generously and with ease. All I do know is that it is so now and I am fulfilled. I delete, delete, delete all programming that could stop me. And I download, download, download everything I need to do so now with grace, ease and joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So it is, so it shall be, or something even better. And take one more deep breath in, exhale with a sigh, and then open your eyes. Hi Gertie, hi Angelique, we are a beautiful group again, ready to conquer the heart chakra, to really dive into what it means to let the heart lead, right? I think we can often get into so much trouble just because we're stuck in a conflict between the brain, the mind, and the heart. And when they want different things, we literally get misaligned with who we really are. So today, we are going to get realigned with that core energy, that, that source energy, that love, right? So that we can forgive and release joyfully. <laughs> so we can melt down any heart walls we may have built up. Because you see, when, when we're hurt, when we feel pain, when we felt rejected or, or abandoned or humiliated or whatever, right? We can create a kind of wall around us where we're saying, okay, that's never going to happen again. I'm never going to be that vulnerable woman again. I'm never going to love that deeply again because it just hurts. <laughs> but you see, here's the thing. If we don't love deeply anymore, nothing is really deep anymore. Right? And we can often end up feeling kind of numbed out and incapable of actually feeling that innate joy for life. And as it's my mission to teach this and to, to really, you know, be this, I would like to invite you to embrace the idea that all of this could be a really joyful process. So there's no reason to feel scared. <laughs> we might tap into a few triggers, of course, because that's how we learn. And we might become aware of a bit of anxiety or fear around this concept of opening our hearts, but you're in a safe place, okay? So we're all in this together, and I promise, as usual, I will not hold back in any way, and I will share everything that you need to know about myself and about this process so that we can do this safely. So. I'm called Joy Martina now in this moment of time, right? But I was not born that way. I was actually christened Nicola Joy. So Nicola is actually a beautiful Scottish name that I went by for 30 odd years until I met my husband, Roy Martina, in Oi, Germany. So Joy and Roy met in Oi. Hmm, interesting, right? So <laughs> I was uh, Nicola Ride at that time. I was um, just freshly divorced from my husband that I had been married to for 17 years. I had two beautiful boys, uh, Jacob and George. I still have them. They're amazing guys. And I had little Gracie, right? And little Gracie has a different dad. So I was in a little chaotic sort of situation, you might say. And you know, the divorce itself was painful enough, getting the kids through this in a good way of giving them enough support so they would not get traumatized. That was, that was rough. And then I had just started my own business. I had opened up this beautiful beauty salon right in the, side of Sal in the heart of Salzburg, where I am now, where I help women, you know, get good care of their skin, you know, become their most beautiful selves. And I loved what I did. I love one-on-one -on -one work with people. I love touch. So I really enjoyed my work and yet I was kind of stuck. I knew that there was more in me. I knew that I could be doing more than what I was doing. And I knew that the relationship that I was in was not satisfying me, that I'd kind of run against a wall. Because you see, after having kind of trashed a, a marriage after seven years, my husband walked out on me because he fell in love with another woman. And that's good, right? I'm now seeing it as the biggest blessing in my life. But at that time, it was really painful. 
And, and then I met this amazing guy who seemed to be the answer to my prayers, but guess what? It wasn't. But we had beautiful grace. And I knew that, oh my God, I've, I've got to tackle this something, this pattern that I keep repeating because, you know, I don't want to go on like this. Just imagine how many men and children I'm going <laughs> to potentially traumatize and myself or that heartache. So I went to I, Mittelburg, which is a beautiful little town in Allgäu in Bavaria with my bestie. Um, because Bestie had given me a CD and book months before this workshop, which was called The Missing Link. So I read the book and I thought, yeah, it's kind of nice. And in the back, there was a CD. And at that time, because I was so stressed out and all that stuff that was going on, I had real trouble sleeping. So my main aim was just to get a good night's sleep because, you know, having three kids doing this single mom thing and running your own business, you need your energy. So um, I listened to this CD and something magical happened. I was able to fall asleep. And believe me, I had tried every single meditation CD I could get my hands on. And every time I listened to them, something pissed me off about it. I don't know. So this was the first time that I liked the voice. I loved the message and I could sleep. So diligent student that I am, I listened to this CD for 90 days because it helped me sleep and I loved it. I went to sleep and you know, the suggestion in the CD, because we know that that's how long it takes to create a good habit is to listen to it for 90 days. So I did. And then in those 90 days, sometime my friend comes along and says, you know, the guy, the author who, who wrote that book and, and that thing, he, he's, he's a medical doctor and he gives workshops. And I said, no, 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 not doing any more workshops. I have done so many spiritual alternative health workshops. I'm done. Because <laughs> I was kind of disappointed in the spiritual world. Because I was disappointed in myself, right? So that's what I was blaming. Uh, anyway, but then she said something that really intrigued me. She said, well, you know, this guy, he was a medical doctor. And then he had his own experiences. And he started researching alternative medicine. And he put together this cool program, and it's called Omega Health Coaching, where he's put together the best bits of what he knows and what works. So I thought, well, that sounds kind of interesting. And I said, well, you know what? You go to this experience weekend thing, because I can't go, I'm going on vacation. Um, you go to this thing and you check him out, because I trust you, you're my sister. So if you say this guy is real, he's authentic, and this is good, then sign me up. So she went. And uh, she called me one day, because um, it was, I think, the third day of the workshop. And she said, oh my God, Joy, I'm telling you, this is the real deal. This guy is the real deal. We need to do this training. So I said, I trust you, honey. Sign me up. And she did. So then months later, I went to this legendary Omega Health coach training in Oi Middlebrook. And you know, the moment this friend of mine and I left home, we had one, one synchronicity after the other. It was as if the universe was speaking to me. But to make matters even worse, just a few weeks before this training started, I went to see one of my oracles, because I've always been into woo-woo, right? So I went to see this oracle, she knew nothing about me, and I went to find out how my business would do, because you know, single mom security was my main thing. And I went there and she laid the cards for me. And as she laid the cards, she said, oh, you're gonna meet the love of your life. And I thought, oh my God, no, please not, not another guy, I cannot deal with it. I've got all this mess going on, please no more men, right? That was, I was so sure about that. And she went on and on and on and gave me all these details and said, no, what's gonna happen? And you're gonna go to this training, is that true? And I said, yes. And she said, you must go to this training. And I said, of course I'm gonna go, I paid. <laughs> and she said, well, at this training, you're gonna meet the love of your life. So I said, okay, I've noted it down, and now let's get on to the other stuff. So the reading took place, and yeah, of course, stuck, stuck with me, and the other friend that was with me at that time, she actually wrote it all down. So I have this piece of paper as proof for the amazingness of the connection of this oracle that she was able to tell me exactly what would unfold. So what unfolded was, that on, um, I think it was day two of this training, which was five days, there was a question and answer round. So you've got to imagine an old Kurhaus. So it wasn't a very beautiful location, but the roundabout was gorgeous. So it was a, a place stuffed with people, which is not my preference. And I was sitting in there actually feeling pretty pissed off at having spent so much money to sit in a room with so many people. 
And I was sitting there and I was feeling grumpy and then at some time there was this question and answer session where if you had a question, you had to stand up in front of 350 people and ask a question. Now, nothing in me, we've got a fly flying through, nothing in me wanted to consciously stand up and ask a question, but something in me picked me out of my chair and I stood there and asked a question. Now, today I don't even know what that question was, but I do remember seeing this guy on stage, you know, quite a few rows on, and something happened. It was as if lightning struck me. And I was sort of, oh God, <laughs> just keep a cool face, you know, just, just say something and then sit down. The moment I sat down, my bestie was like, oh my God, did you see what happened? Did you notice that? And I was like, nope. I have no, no idea what you're talking about. No, no, because I was in full denial. Anyway, the story would go on too long, but by the end of day five, <laughs> the signs were so clear that I knew I had to make contact with this guy. But you see, the problem is this guy was the leader of the workshop. It was Dr. Romatina, and he had groupies everywhere. There were women standing everywhere just begging for a minute of his attention. And I was thinking, no, I am not a groupie. I am not gonna stand in line like that. There's gotta be a better way. So at some point, I remember we had to do some work and we were sticking our vision boards. So I was doing this, and then I saw that he was sitting behind stage and I could kind of make eye contact. So I looked at him and I said, can I talk to you, right? And he said, okay, come here. So then I talked to him and I said, okay, so here's the problem. I've recognized and realized a lot of stuff and I realized that I'm stuck. I'm in a pattern that is super destructive. So what the fuck am I gonna do? So he gave me advice and he said, okay, so here is what you're gonna do. You are gonna go home and you are gonna be the most loving you that you can be to this guy that you were with that you were obviously not happy with, right? So I said, okay, I can do that. I'm gonna go home and I'm gonna be nothing but loving. So I made that commitment to myself and he, oh, by the way, said, and here's my email address. You can, you know, if you need advice, you can email me, right? He was super professional. So off I went, drove home thinking, oh yes, I can do this. And I did. I did for 10 days. I really, I did everything I had learned. I tapped my friggin' points like a hundred times a day. I kept, you know, incantating my affirmations. I kept remembering I am love, I am love, I am love. And I was, I was the nicest I could possibly be. And then on day 10, I was at work late because I used to always work, you know, whenever the kids would sleep. So when the kids were in bed at night, I would go to work. So I went to the practice, had my client, and I was walking home, I was pretty tired, and I opened the door of my apartment, and he was there, although we weren't living together, but he was watching the kids, right, so great. And he stood there, and, and he was holding the glass similar to this, but it had red wine, this is water, and he had this red wine in his hand, and I thought, ooh, this is nice, something's happening, right? And he stood there, and he said, I need to talk to you. And I said, okay. <laughs> And everything in me knew, oh my goodness, now it's happening, right? So he said, you know, I have a question for you. I have realized that I deserve to be with a woman for whom I am the dream man. And I said, you know, I totally agree with you, absolutely. And he said, okay, so my question to you is, am I your dream man? And that's the moment when I had to be that honest, that blunt, and say, I'm really sorry, but you're not. And with that, he took his stuff, he walked out of the door, and that was the end. Of course, it wasn't quite that peaceful for a while while we all went through our emotions and stuff, but you know, now I can say, this is now whew, about eight, nine years ago, now I can say, we're good friends, we're the bestest of friends because we know each other, we've forgiven each other, we can see that there was so much blessing in everything that unfolded. He's in a great relationship, I'm in a great relationship and it's good, our kid is good, our kid can see that this is possible. You know, that people who once loved each other passionately and then grew apart can still be friends and I think that's also the goal of today. Because I know that every single one of us will have pain in the past, will have had relationships that maybe didn't go the way that we wanted them. We've all been hurt. We've all not felt loved. And 
You see, here's the thing, we all want to feel loved and we all need to feel loved. So when our heart chakra is blocked, here are the symptoms that we will have. We will find giving and receiving love hard. We might find we'll have heart walls. We feel kind of numb towards the affection of others. We'll have trouble with intimacy. Um, our fascia, so that's, that's kind of the, imagine like a cellophane wrap around every muscle strand, around every organ. This fascia hardens up. We literally harden up. We become less flexible. Then our vagus nerve, right? That's the longest, most powerful nerve that connects our brain and our gut. Our vagus nerve will be untrained. We will have trouble dealing with change in life. So we'll literally become inflexible. And then we'll have an inability to feel that innate joy for life because of the traumatic imprints and of all those painful experiences that we've had and we've never been able to really work through and process. And then, Let's talk about those emotions we might most likely have stored and suppressed inside of us. And those two main emotions are, do you want to take a guess? <laughs> you have anger and grief, right? Because we usually feel angry that things are not going our way, that, you know, this dream plan that we had didn't work out and then we'll feel grief around that because we've had to let go of something. We've had to accept that, you know, it's different. So an anger and grief and, and resentment, if we store that inside of us, our body literally gets toxic. So, you know, uh, I think it was Nelson Mandela or, or Gandhi, I think it might have been Gandhi, who said, if we are angry with another person, it's like taking lethal poison and expecting the other to die. But here's the thing, you see, anger feels kind of good. Anger definitely feels better than grief. Because remember that, that chart of all the frequencies on this planet, of the emotions that I was talking about the other day in that book, Power vs. Force by David Hawkins? Well, you see, shame is real down here. Then we have grief, it's a little bit higher. And then we have anger, that's even higher. So and then we have all the good stuff like love and joy and, you know, but you see, if, if, if I have a choice between feeling grief and anger, then usually the human will choose to feel anger unless it's sunk so deep that it can't get out of the grief anymore. So those two emotions, grief and anger, are, are, are like sisters. And I've noticed if we just deal with one of them, the other one stays stuck. So um, here's my tip for all of you because it's not something that we are able to do in this session right now. It's something that's very personal and it's something really sacred. I would like to share my favorite way of swamping, releasing grief and anger with you. And because of all the restrictions that we face, um, like not being able to play music on Facebook and, and stuff like that, I'm just gonna tell you the steps and then I invite you to create your own swamp. A swamp, you know, Womp, is something that you best do with a sister goddess or a other man god, right? So by being um, observed in this process, by having someone to hold space for you, it becomes even more powerful. And it's, it's a very vulnerable, intimate thing. So here's what you do. You accept <laughs> that you do have grief and anger stored somewhere in your body. And you decide, you choose to let go of it. So you could start out with a crystalline command and say, even if I don't know how to swamp grief and anger right now, all I do know is that it is so now and I am fulfilled. I delete, delete, delete all that could stop me and I download, download, download everything I need to do so now with grace, ease and joy. Okay, then you get a few yoga mats. Right? You create a safe space, you lock the door, you make sure that you're undisturbed, you roll out a few yoga mats, you get your bestie in, your man god, your sister goddess, whatever, who's going to do this with you. They've got to join in, right? They've got to join in. And then you put on some music. Now, I will happily share in the Jai Tribe my uh, Apple list music that I have, Apple music lists, sorry, I'm talking too fast, my Apple music lists 
on grief and anger. So I have special playlists for all kinds of situations in life. And for this swamp, you want to pick two songs. You want to pick one song for grief and one song for anger. Okay? My favorite song that actually works for both is The Sound of Silence by Disturbed, they're called. And I'm going to play just a little bit of it. And, and if I play it quietly, maybe um, Facebook won't notice. It's, it's set our intention that they don't notice I'm playing this right now. So here I go into my playlist. I check out grief. There we go. And then here it is. Let's see if you can hear it. You remember the process, right? So powerful. In the goddess retreat, we did that, Loredana. Hello, darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. Because a vision softly creeping left its seed while I was sleeping. And the vision that was planted in my brain still remains within the sound of silence. It's a beautiful one for a grief or anger release, okay? And then what you want to do is you want to connect back to that two-year-old that little tantrum you, right? And you want to let your body release all that grief and anger. So basically, you want to start rolling around on the floor. I'm just going to show you the moves, right? And you can punch the floor, and you can howl, and you can slap, and you can roll around, and you can go on your back, and you can kick your feet. The main thing is that you keep moving. You have to keep moving for those three to six minutes, however long you're giving yourself. And in that time, you let it all out. You no longer allow yourself to keep that anger or grief or whatever it is in, inside of you, okay? Very, very powerful technique. Now, the other thing that you can do is you could get, in German, we call it a teppichbrake. You know, one of those um, things that you can whack uh, carpets with. And go whack your carpets. Make that energy of anger, that fire of anger, into something useful. So another beautiful thing that I love to do as a ritual in an anger and grief release is to plant a tree. You know how hard it can be to dig a decent hole in the ground to plant a tree? We don't need to necessarily be destructive with our anger because that's what we want to go away from, right? So even even whacking, I don't know, a pillow with a baseball stick. Yeah, I mean, if you've got nothing else, but I think planting a tree is, is way more beautiful. So think about ways of how you could allow that anger and grief just to see them as emotions and allow them to process through your bodies. Because remember, we need to get it all aligned. It's not just a mental thing. It's not just an emotional thing. It's also a physical thing. So when we put all three parts together, then we're just way more successful and you'll find that the results are even more lasting. The other thing you can do is you can go into a safe container and scream it out, sing it out. So, you know, if, it's, it's, if you're in a good place and you're not disturbing other people, make sure that you, you sing full blow, that you shout and scream it all out so that you can really release that stuff. Okay, so... We can agree, I think, right? And raise your hand if you agree, that we all need to love and be loved. And here's a note to all parents. Just because we love our children, unfortunately doesn't mean that they feel loved. And to all grown-ups now and to all children now, we're all that way, right? Just because our parents loved us doesn't mean that we felt loved. So in a way, I'd say... No, it, it, almost everyone has some childhood trauma towards being loved or not feeling loved. I remember I did a childhood regression, um, which is a hypnotic therapy, with my eldest son once, right? And I, I swear to God, I've really always done my very, very best as a mom, and I think we all do, right? But I was so sure of that, right? And one of my things was to make sure that my kids wouldn't be traumatized, because, you know, as a psychologist, it's kind of important to me. So I did this childhood regression on some topic that Jacob had at that time. I can't even remember what it was. 
And anyway, we did this childhood regression to the very first time that he felt unloved. And you know what it was? It was a little moment where he was two or three years old and he had come into the kitchen and he told me this, and you know, in hypnosis, they, they, the, the, the client will tell you what they're experiencing. So he was telling me, oh, I'm going into the kitchen and I'm about two and a half years old and you're cooking or something and I want something from you. And you said, Jacob, I don't have time right now. That's how simple it can be. So, you know, we don't always have to have massive trauma like abuse or, or something like that going on. It can be simple things like that where we just from our child's mind didn't understand what was happening. So that's why I'm so passionate about the joyful kids, because you see, if we help children in childhood already to deal with stress, to manage their emotions, to overcome challenges, then we're going to save an F ton of therapy later on. So I think it just makes sense. So, and that's also the reason why childhood trauma hits so hard, because we're in those vulnerable brainwave states, because we don't have the experience, we don't have the tools, we often don't have the environment that is supportive to us, but the good news is we can do something about this right now, and we are in this session. So stay with me because you are gonna be able to clear your personal top trauma today so that you can be sure that at least a heart wall that you might have built up, or maybe even 10, are uh, meltdown and you are really way more capable of giving and receiving love. So stay with me. What we're gonna do in a moment is we're gonna combine different tools to get the maximum effect. We're gonna combine a tool called five count breathing, which is a technique that I learned through the Heart Math Institute. And they found out through lots of fantastic research that when we count in a rhythm of one to five as we breathe in, and from one to five as we breathe out, we actually tune into the frequency of our heart. If we now think of someone that we love, a beautiful bunch of flowers, your favorite place in nature, and continue to breathe from one to five, count from one to five as we breathe in, and from one to five as we breathe out, we are activating our heart chakra. And that's what we're gonna start out with, right? So I've explained that to you, super simple. You just count from one to five as you breathe in, and from one to five as you breathe out. Yes, I'll get to the specific oils at the end, Ingrid, thank you. Then we're gonna tune the breathing in with that prayer of compassion that you already did yesterday with me. May all beings feel safe. And may all beings feel healthy. May all beings feel happy. And may all beings live life with ease. Good, that's step two. Step three is we're gonna tune in to the shamanic forces, Ho'oponopono, right? The Hawaiian shamans who discovered that by forgiving and by simply repeating this little prayer that I'm gonna share with you in a moment, people were able to clear trauma and karma incredible. So there are great books about that. And um, yeah, just, I, I can't remember who the guy was who was able to, I think it was a, an American hypnotist who used this technique in, in actually psychic wards, right? So he went into psychic wards and all he did was repeat this prayer from Ho'oponopono and he could watch the patients get better. So believe it or not, it doesn't matter, we're gonna tune into that, bring that in, the shaman, so Ho'oponopono. And here, all you do is you say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you, thank you. I'm sorry, please forgive me. I love you, thank you. Now, you'll find this written in different variations. So some say, thank you first, and sorry then. It doesn't really matter. We'll just take that in too. So we have the shamans from Hawaii with us. Then we're gonna cut the karmic links. Because you see, 
we build energetic links, karmic cords, with people that we connect to, especially when we connect with our chakras. So when our chakras connect, for instance, if our second chakras connect and we have sex with someone, we are linked. We have karmic links with that person. And then often we might find that even days later, we're not even seeing that person anymore, maybe, but we're still feeling them. We're still thinking of them. We're still linked. So when we have trauma or people that we're very close to, you can, you can just guarantee that you have a bunch of karmic links with those people. Because you see, as divine beings now choosing an experience on this planet, we got to choose who's going to be in our life. We got to choose what kind of family we wanted, what country we wanted to be born in, what star sign we were going to be born in. So this is something that you can read up in Roy's beautiful book called... Um, deep soul soul deep diving deep yeah I, i'm sure i'll find it again it's an amazing book deep deep diving deep diving soul deep diving it's an amazing book anyway there you can read up that we chose this all so every single one in our life who triggers us who, who causes us pain is actually there as a teacher and you know it's actually a teacher who we're not even paying <laughs> Because we're usually so stubborn and resistant in accepting the teaching. But once we open up to the idea that even those who are creating us most pain are actually turning up as to be our greatest teachers, then we step out of that energy of resistance and we're able to open up to learning. Right? So that is something that I would love us all to really accept and embrace today. All those people that you might have even called your enemy, they're your teacher. Wow, didn't you choose well? Didn't you choose some of the best teachers ever? So now the only question is, what is it that you wanted to learn? What are they teaching you? And for finding out what someone is trying to teach you, I think the shadow process by Debbie Ford is one of the best techniques ever. So in our heart healing revolution, this is a free process. You can join any time. It's a five day process where you invest 20 minutes a day to be able to clear one drama and trauma, forgive one person or cause for good. And in that heart healing experience, we go into these shadow and light signs because you see, we all have light and shadow in us. And so often those shadows that we see in ourselves are our biggest treasures. And so often the light that we see in another is just a light that we have in us, but we can't see. So I really invite you to check out the Heart Healing Revolution and become a Heart Healing Ambassador. People like Loredana, and I, I'm sure there are more of you online right now, even came to retreats. We had retreats in Bali, in, in Asheville, all over the world where we took people through this process because we know how incredibly important forgiveness is and it doesn't have to be hard. Okay, so next, after the karmic link cutting, which is going to be a kind of physical process, I'm going to tell you the incantations and you're just going to have to repeat after me. Then we are going to get on the Tesla. And today we've got a really exciting program. We are going to tune into the harmonics of the solfeggio frequencies. And for, day, for today's sessions, I have chosen the first of the solfeggio frequencies, which is 174 hertz. And it's the first step of that musical tonal ladder that um, solfeggio um, is known for. And it's known as a natural anesthetic. So if you're in pain, it's going to be good. It also can remove physical and energetic pain and karmic energy, fancy that. And it also promotes deep healing of the organs. Of course, this kind of uh, technique and, and medicine is not recognized by traditional medicine. So these are just affirmations. I am not promising any healing. I am not a medical doctor. And I invite you to really bathe in those frequencies and allow your body to receive everything that it needs so that you can tune into love. Okay, so that is the strategy for today. So I would say without further ado, yes, it's perfect time. 
We're going to tune in, so drink a sip of water. Mm -mm -mm. Find your comfortable position. You could be sitting upright, making sure that your spine is straight, your neck is straight, your body is relaxed. Or you could even lie down. I will sort of sit sideways so you can see the Tesla charge really well and you can hear my voice really well. So you might not see all of me the whole time, but I'm definitely here and I'll be talking to you because we're gonna go on a little journey together, okay? So get comfortable, I'm gonna get into my position. By the way, the reason why I'm wearing a hat is not only because it's green, but before I started this session, I decided to take a forest bath in some bath salts that were of course also green. And then something in me decided to also dive under. So then I discovered I don't have a hairdryer, which is why I'm wearing a hat. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to turn on the test in a moment. Um, and then I invite you to simply relax, focus on your breath. And we're going to start with the five count breath, right? So you're going to count from one to five as you breathe in. And from one to five as you breathe out. And yes, you can sing an arm. That would be really beautiful. Maybe we'll start out with that, or maybe we'll end with that. Let's see. Okay, so get ready. Here it comes. It's eight minutes. Eight minutes. Pona, get comfortable, make sure your spine is straight, your neck is straight, your shoulders are relaxed, your face is relaxed. Start breathing into your belly as you count from one to five. And as you exhale, you also count from one to five. Slowing down your breath. Allowing it to become subtle and soft. Tuning in to the frequency of love. Recording a happy moment with a loved one. Thinking of your favorite place in nature. And noticing how your breath is starting to become deeper. Longer. And softer. As you are sinking deeper. And deeper into a deep state of relaxation. You are safe. You are relaxed. Notice how your heartbeat is harmonizing, pulsating rainbows of love through your entire body. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, and gold. Allow all cells in your body to receive this rainbow light of healing, washing out any pain, any suffering, melting away any heart walls, any resistance against love. Notice how all fear is simply dissipating, dissolving, as you are allowing more and more light to come into your body, streaming in through the top of your head, balancing your brain left, right brain hemisphere, 
activating your neocortex, that fewest part of your brain. Bring the healing frequencies down into your faith. Smoothing out any wrinkles or blemishes. Allowing your face to be relaxed and soft. Bring the energy down into your neck. Relaxing your neck. Realigning your spine, your atlas. Allowing any weight you may be carrying on your shoulders to simply melt away. Relaxing your arms, your elbows. Bringing the energy right down into the palms of your hands. Relaxing every fingertip. Relaxing into this ocean of love. Relax your chest now. Notice how every breath is filling your lungs with love. Rainbow colored love. Clearing and cleansing and strengthening your lungs. Allow the rainbows to flow into the center of your heart. To cleanse your heart, your veins, your arteries. Feeling gratitude for this beautiful heart of yours. Expand those rainbows out into your ribcage. Bring it down your entire spine, lengthening your spine, creating space between your vertebrae, allowing all your discs to become young, youthful, flexible, filled with love and health, relaxing all the nerves and muscles in your back. Bringing the energy down into your belly. Feeling all your inner organs with love. Thanking your heart. Your liver. Your spleen. Your digestive system. Your sexual organs, your bladder. Thanking them all for all the work that they do for you every day every night. Imagine bringing that healing energy down into your pelvis, your hips. Realigning your skeletal structure in the body. Clearing and cleansing and relaxing the fascia. Allowing the fascia to become soft and supple. Wrapping itself gently around your organs and muscles. That neural network in your body is signaling love throughout your entire body now. Maybe you could imagine how your entire body is lighting up as a rainbow right now. As you are allowing those healing frequencies to flow down your hips and to your legs. Circling in your knees, your kneecaps. Dripping down, down your legs into your ankles. Circling in the ankles, flowing down into your feet. Right into every single tip of your toes. Rainbow light. Divine light. Realigning you to your divine blueprint of health, happiness, and love. Imagine seeing so much light in your body that your auric field starts filling up with light, rainbow light. Pulsating stars of rainbow being sent out from the vortex of your energetic body out into the universe. Imagine now sending that starlight to the stars up in the sky, pulsating love. And then inside of yourself, you say, I am love. 
I am you eternal. I am you infinite. Imagine them becoming so expansive in your rainbow loving energy that you could imagine sending it out to someone that you are in conflict with. Someone who hurt you in the past. Imagine from your heart to their heart to now send them this rainbow light, pulsating love to them, reminding them of who they are. So now repeat inside of yourself, you are love. You are eternal. And you are infinite. One more deep breath in. And out. And now imagine becoming aware of those karmic links. Those energetic cords that you have between yourself and this person. Or this incident. And notice how the energy centers in your body are linked to the energy centers of this other being or incident. I invite you now to become aware of which chakras or which chakra is linked to this incident or person. Just notice. And then notice how strong this connection is on a scale from zero to 10. Zero would be there is no connection, no emotion, nothing. And 10 means there's maximum connection, maximum emotion. Notice your connection now and give it a number from zero to 10. Very well, take a deep breath in and out. Stretch up and say yes. You've got your number, write it down. So write down the number that signifies the connection to this person or incident that just turned up in your meditation. So I'll start out. I have a five and the incident or the, the group of people that I feel most judgment towards and that I have the hardest time forgiving are pedophiles. Yeah, really struggle with that. So I'm writing down the number five and I'm writing down pedophiles, okay? And when I just say that, I know there's all these emotions coming up. So you wanna do that for yourself now too. Write it down, write it down, write it down. Okay, and then give me a hands up when you're ready. We have eight minutes to go, we're good on time, we're good on time, because now we've just got to tap. Hi, Zeus. You might be a little late for this, but you could just write down someone you're really pissed off with or that you haven't forgiven, and you write down how pissed off or how unforgivable you are feeling towards this person. Write down your number and the name, okay? Are we ready? Let's get going. I'm gonna take a sip of water. You might wanna do the same. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so now when we do this tapping, you wanna say the name that you are working on, right? So I'm gonna say pedophiles, but you might not have a deal with pedophiles. Your name might be Tom or Susan or whatever. So okay, you say the name, and then you're gonna say everything like I say. Ready? Okay, so here we go. Pedophiles. I love and accept myself with all my anger and frustration and grief and unforgiveness and all my karmic links that I have with you. And I love and accept myself when I now choose to cut these karmic links and to step into the power of forgiveness. Now. Good job. Underneath your left arm, left arm, okay? Spleen meridian. Start tapping. Say your name. I love and accept myself with all my lack of self-worth, how I feel small towards you, how I feel I don't make a difference, and all these limiting beliefs that I have. I love and accept myself. 
And I now choose to cut these links, to step into my power of believing in myself. I believe in myself, I believe in myself, I believe in myself. And breathe. Very well. Thumbs. Strike them against each other like this. Lung meridian. We're working on grief. Okay? So say your name. I love and accept myself with all the grief that I feel inside of me. <sighs> At my deepest level and from the very first time that I felt this way. And I now choose to release this grief and step into my power of joy. I deserve to be happy. I deserve to feel joyful. I deserve to forgive. <sighs> Good job. It's all tingling. Um, underneath your collarbones, like this, like this, start tapping. You're tapping your kidney meridian. We're tuning into fear. Say the name. I love and accept myself with all my fears I have around you. My, my fears of abuse, my fears that you'll harm my children, my fears that I have that you're harming other children. All these fears that I have, that the fears that I don't make a difference, the fears that I can't change this, the, the fears that there will never be peace, the fear that there will always be pain. All these fears that I have on my conscious and unconscious level, I love and accept myself. And I now choose to release these fears and to step into my power of courage. I am brave, I am courageous, and I am now cutting these links. I'm free, I'm free, I'm free, I'm free. Good job. Liver, start tapping your liver. It's underneath your right rib cage, your liver, one of the biggest detox organs. Start tapping or massaging your liver. Say the name. Clean us out. I love and accept myself with all the anger that I feel, all the resentment, all the judgment at my deepest level and from the very first time that I felt this way. And I choose now to release this anger and to forgive. I forgive myself and I step into my power of peace. I am at peace with myself and those around me. Final step, the cutting of the cords. Now we are going to connect our heart chakra and our crown chakra. So we're going to wave the air. Kind of cool, right? We're going to wave the air. Come join us, Karen, Irene. We're just cutting links to someone who hurt us. So just think of the person and now repeat after me. Say the name. I claim my power back. And I give you your power back. I claim my freedom back. And I give you your freedom back. <sighs> I forgive you for all the pain and suffering you ever caused. And I ask for forgiveness for all the pain and suffering I ever caused. The past remains in the past. Only love can connect us. I wish you well, just as I wish myself well. Breathe, put your hand on your heart. And if you like, imagine drifting and floating to this beautiful crystalline palace in the clouds. A palace filled with healing gemstones. And imagine that you could now lay your energetic body, your spiritual body, your parts of you into that palace in this beautiful healing chamber of green healing light. And as you place your energetic body there to rest, heal, regenerate and rejuvenate, Notice how it's now time to speak that prayer of compassion. May all beings feel safe. May all beings feel healthy. May all beings feel happy. 
and may all beings live life with ease. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So it is, so it shall be, or something even better. Take a deep breath in and out and reach up, stretch out. Bring all the energy into your heart and say, yes, 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 yes. I love me. I'm love. I'm eternal. I am infinite. How are you feeling? Martin, you are in a crystal palace in the clouds. That's cool. Please let me know that you're all back. You're safe. You're feeling good. And now notice if you can still find that emotion, that drama, that trauma, or if it's gone now. Go check out. Has it gone now? Has it gone now? <laughs> Let me know how you're doing. And then I shall move on to giving you my last tips for today. Oh my God, time flies, don't you find? I'm having so much fun with you guys. Okay, so you're back. I'm seeing hearts. I'm guessing you're all back. You're not deep asleep somewhere. <laughs> Good. Cheers to you to your new ease in life, to you being able to give to us, being able to give and receive love like never before. Are you in? Yes, I really? Good. Monica's relaxed. Yuzia's feeling great. That's beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. Beautiful. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. Cool. So here we go. Here are the essential oils that support and balance our heart chakra. Cypress, geranium, and jasmine. Those are my three favorite. Cypress, geranium, and jasmine. Cypress, geranium, jasmine. And you might have noticed if you tuned in on time when we started, I was spraying this beautiful spray called Zirbenwald. Okay, and a Zirbe is a really special tree. Um, I have a lot of connections to that tree for many reasons. Um, and this tilbe is actually in English called stone pine. And the stone pine is known to calm the heart rate, um, to stabilize circulation, and to reduce fears and depression. And once upon a time, I used to have a house on a skiing slope that was completely clad in stone pine wood. And that was a place where I felt so relaxed the moment I entered the door. So since we all can't have maybe stone pine clad places, what we can do is we can get the essential oil of stone pine, put it in a little spray like this and breathe it in. It's great to clean rooms. I love spraying it on my bed clothes and talking bed, I love sleeping. I have a little pillow that is filled with stone pine um, kernels, right? So you can also get that. Check it out. I'm not sure what's available in your country. I know that here in Austria, Tilgenholz is a big thing, so it's quite easy to get. Next, how could you go deeper? How could you do more? Well, one thing I've already told you, that is the heart healing revolution. It's uh, totally for free. We do encourage you to please share it with your friends, right? This is just a gift from our hearts and our main aim is to get as many heart healing ambassadors active on this planet to be a counterbalance to everything else that's going on. Then what else can you do? You can incorporate green, the color green, into your life more often. You could make a, a kind of commitment to yourself that for one day, three days, 10 days, whatever, you're going to focus on green. So you could let me have green stuff at home. I was today eating from a green plate. I took a green salt bath. Um, I'm sitting on a green yoga mat. <laughs> you can eat green food. You might giggle about this and think, oh, well, what good is that going to do? But it does. Color therapy is really powerful. And I'd encourage you to become playful and to see how many different ways could you incorporate green in your life. Next, find something lovable about yourself every day. Something lovable and something different every day. So you could say, oh, I, I love my eyes. Oh, I love my laugh. Oh, I love how I take care of people. I love how I care about the planet. I 
um, love making people laugh and smile. I love this, I love that. And say it out loud. Make people compliments, share that love. There's always something nice about someone. And here's another tool that I wanna share with you, another way to find ease. And that is extremely powerful in giving feedback. You know, often it can be hard to give feedback if maybe something that the person did was, was good, but it, it could be even better and you don't know how to say it nicely. Or maybe someone did something that you really don't like and you wanna tell them in a good way without them feeling threatened. This is something that I teach in my heart healing, sorry, heart healing, in my joyful kids mastermind. So that's where we kind of dive deeper and this is a tool that I share. So write it down, three sentence stems. Write down three sentence stems. The first one is, I like. Write it down, I like, dot, dot, dot. The next sentence stem is, I notice. I notice. And the last sentence stem is, I wonder. I wonder. So in yoga school, for instance, when we were doing, we're teaching each other, we were practicing, this is how we learn to give feedback. So if someone, for instance, as a teacher, would kind of do something in the class that felt unpleasant to my body, right? They touched me and it, it hurt. I could then say, I like how you were trying to help me. I noticed that when you put your hand on my back, there was a lot of pressure. And I'm wondering if you were a little gentler, whether it wouldn't feel even nicer. Or a child that's being really noisy and singing really noisily, although you've just asked them to be quiet, how could you tell them? You could say, I like your singing and I like how you're using your voice. I notice that you're being really noisy right now and the neighbors are starting to feel a little agitated and I'm feeling a little stressed. So I'm wondering if you could sing so quietly that you could put a baby to sleep. Could you do that? Okay, so I like, I notice, I wonder, a beautiful way of giving feedback and a beautiful way of being more impeccable with your words and so creating more of what you want. And what we are into is a life with ease. So thank you so much for joining me today. I have three more tips for you on how to continue your journey. Apart from the Heart Healing Revolution, I would recommend checking out our Letting Go and Karma Bundle. This is a little package we put together. It's not a high investment. And with that, you can actually dive deeper into this whole process of cutting karmic cords, burning karma. It's a really fun package. And then we have the Prayer of Gratitude in there, which is a beautiful meditation that you can use anytime you're feeling frustrated because we do know that the more grateful you feel in life, the more life will give you to be grateful for. So, I am so glad you joined me today and I would like to thank you for being part of my group and for all those of you who are just as wacky as me, I have one more special tip and that is ask the angels for help. Really, we have millions of angels all around us literally praying to be allowed to help us. But because they follow the rule of non-interference, right? The universal rule of non-interference, you've got to ask until someone wants you to help. They can't help unless you ask them to. So here's my petition. Get your angels involved. Talk to your angels more often. Become aware of them and ask them for help because you will notice the most magical shifts when you do. And if you're into that kind of thing, do check out my angel package. I put together not only an ebook, it's now been printed also in Italian. So this is a product that I can offer you in English and in Italian. And we have beautiful channeled angel meditations where with each meditation, you can connect to a different angel from the archangels, of course, Michael and Raphael and Gabriel, but also a lot of angels that you might not know yet. And in my little guidebook, I explain to you how I connect to angels, simple practices that you can do every day. And this is a beautiful package that I would also recommend for children. 
Children love working with angel. It's there. It's natural to them. And it can be the good night story, maybe. You'll notice your kids will sleep better. They'll sleep deeper. And they'll feel less anxious and, and maybe even depressed. So work with the angels. They're amazing beings. And yeah, from my angel heart to your angel heart, because we're actually all earth angels, I thank you for your time and your commitment and your dedication. Do please share this challenge with your friends. We've got a few more days to go and everybody can start from day one again simply by joining the Joy Tribe and joining our mission to spread joy while we help ourselves and others thrive. Mille bachi, tausend Dank. Ich hab euch lieb. I love you and I look forward to our next day tomorrow where we're going to be dealing with our throat chakra. So how do we express all that love that we have inside of us? I wonder. We'll think about that and dive into that tomorrow where I look forward to clearing sabotage in the throat chakra with you. Anything that's holding you back from speaking your truth in the most compassionate way. And for now, I would love to wish you a blessed night or day, wherever you may be. Bye-bye. Oops. <laughs> Doesn't want to go.